Okay. Like I said, this will be our last verse, um, and after that, we'll wrap it up. This this is my my final verse I can I can give. This is Acts chapter fifteen, and I'm gonna leave it up here for you to read. Um, I'm just gonna wait a little bit, you know, let you read it, and then from there I'll I'll close it out. All right. So it's my turn. Let me let me go ahead and, and read out some key things here. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. I want you guys to think about that. That says a whole lot. I hope that sums it up for you. Now, when you know Paul and Barnabas heard this. Uh, they they went into a dispute right then and there. Basically, it says, and when they came to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, and of the apostles, and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up a certain sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them. And to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and the elders came together for to consider this matter. So here's the dispute right here. And when there had been such a disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe, and God which knoweth the hearts Bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put off no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither of our fathers nor we were able to bear? (laughs) Right, which was the law. They knew this. They knew what they were talking about. This makes obviously perfect sense. But... Ye believe that through the grace of the Lord, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles with them, by them. And that after they had heard their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Sound familiar? Yeah, sounds like Isaiah 62 verse 2, don't it? Anyway, and to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down. And I will build upon the ruins thereof and I will set up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. By the way, when he says residue of men seek after the Lord, this is pertaining to no other verse than Amos chapter 9, verse 12. You can read it. This is what it's talking about. Now, he puts a spin on it, spin on it by saying the residue of men might seek after the Lord. You know, it says some other things like uh, the remnant of Edom shall be possessed. But I think that's ironic how he compared the Gentiles with the remnant of Edom. And these people that James and Paul and Peter were talking to were supposedly supposed to all be Israelites, it doesn't make any sense now. Why would they go through the painstaking effort of going through these Old Testament verses, clearly showing that they were Gentiles, trying to use those verses to, to prove that they were really Jews, or Israelites and Gentiles say to mind. It doesn't, make, it doesn't even make any sense now. But let me continue to read. That they might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord. Who doeth all these things, known unto God, are all the works from the beginning of the world, whereof my sentence is, that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned are turned to God. But that we write unto them, that they in every city that preach them, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day, that then please it the apostles and elders with the church, with the whole church, as to send those men of their own company to Antioch, and Paul with Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren, and they wrote letters to them of this manner. 
The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have uh, troubled you with words, subversing your souls, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we give no such commandment. So they're making distinctions between what the Jews command and what they command. Think about it. It seemed good to us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent, therefore, Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols, and from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which ye keep yourselves. Ye do well. Fare ye well. So when they basically dismissed, they came into Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle, which then, you know, they had read, and rejoiced for the consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. That scripture alone tells the, tells the black Hebrew Israelites that the ancestors that they want to you know, claim ancestry to are basically arguing with Jews on reasons why the Gentiles can be a part of God and, and be saved. And receive salvation. This blows the whole John 3.16 out of the water. And all those other things. Um, I basically don't know um, how much more plain this can get. But um, I guess that was pretty much my last verse. And this concludes my topic. Okay, so that concludes um, the New Testament series. Now, I will be presenting, you know, more facts. There are actually more facts that um, I'm already working on to prove um, who Paul was talking to. But those are the little bit that I painstakingly put together into a very nice PowerPoint to uh, show you that there were distinctions made between Jews, Christians, um, Gentiles, and proselytes. I don't know how much clearer um, I... I could possibly make this to you that when people talk about John 3.16 um, and they say the word world and all that it's funny how every Israelite I've seen, you know, uh, Judah preach and uh, um, I think, um, what's his name um, J Jake's is back or someone in Nathaniel 7 is back they all use uh, Webster's Dictionary, but they never go into the original accounts the original is Cosmos for God so loved the cosmos. That's the whole world. It's orderly arrangement and all its inhabitants. That's what that word means. Um, I proved it in my um, uh, John 3.16 for Israelites. You can watch that video. But ultimately, what I'm trying to say is, is that these facts um, were, not, were never even covered. How is it that me, being a Christian, I can show you a thousand verses in the other other direction um, that show God's uh, posture with G Gentiles and the rest of the world. How is it that your your leaders and the, and the Black Hebrew Israelites are missing these facts? What I'm saying is is what I said before. You are being lied to. Now my next clip. I will um, explain even more um, of what it you know means to be an Israelite and how you become an Israelite. They teach you that you have to be born an Israelite. I'm going to teach you otherwise about the Bible. Till then, we'll depart. Take care.